Uh, let's bring in the deputy editor of The Spectator now, Freddie Gray, who joins us in the studio. I suppose all of this uh, boils down to whether or not uh, the prime minister has any credibility anymore and whether or not indeed she will see us to the next general election. Well, I think that's looking pretty unlikely. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly Tory MPs I've spoken to the last 24 hours think she's going to go possibly by the end of this week. One of them said to me last night she won't last tomorrow, as in today. And is that because of this 1922 committee meeting between officers and Sir Graham Brady? Yes, I think that that would be what would what would trigger the departure. I, I mean, I, I suspect it, uh, there was a lot of heat, a lot of, you know, people were very hyped up last night, so there was probably a lot of very angry talk. In fact, there obviously was a lot of angry talk. Uh, so I suspect that could be sort of, you know, the calm of the morning might calm things a little bit. But there is no doubt that she does not have many allies mm. uh, in her own cabinet, let alone in the party. And the party is in a sort of murderous, suicidal mood. Mm. Well, look, just to get a sense of just how febrile things were last night, let's listen to a clip of Charles Walker. He was on a rival channel, but it was just such an extraordinary tirade from him. We think it's uh, worth replaying. Let's have a listen into this Conservative backbencher. Perfectly honest, this whole affair is inexcusable. It, it is just, it is a pitiful reflection on the Conservative Parliamentary Party at every level. Um, and it reflects really badly, obviously, on the government of the day. Do you think there's any coming back from this? I don't think so. But I haven't, I, I have to say I've been of that view really since two, two weeks ago. Um, this is an absolute disgrace. As a Tory MP of 17 years, who's never been a minister, who's got on with it loyally most of the time, I think it's a shambles and a disgrace. I think it is utterly appalling. So, so you seem quietly... I'm, I'm, I'm livid. And, you know, I really shouldn't say this, but I hope all those people that put Liz Truss in number 10, I hope it was worth it. I hope it was worth it for the ministerial red box. I hope it was worth it to sit around the cabinet table because the damage they have done to our party is extraordinary. I'm sorry, it's very difficult to convey. You look just furious about this. I am. I am. I've had enough. I've had enough of talentless people um, putting their tick in the right box, not because it's in the national interest, but because it's in their own personal interest to achieve ministerial position. And I, and I know I speak for hundreds of backbenchers who right now um, are worrying for their constituents all the time, but now worrying about their own personal circumstances because there is nothing as X as an ex MP. And a lot of my colleagues are wondering, as many of their constituents are wondering, how they're going to pay their mortgages if this all comes to an end soon. So that's, yeah, that's Charles Walker, uh, Conservative MP, backbencher of 17 years, speaking uh, to the BBC. Um, extraordinary what he had to say, Freddie. Yeah, you know, there's a lot to unpack in that rant. Uh, I think one of the things that's most extraordinary about it is, the, is that how angry he is with Tory members. So that's the people he owes his job to. That's the sort of grassroots, probably quite a lot of GB News viewers out there. And he's saying to them, you've let us down, you've appointed this disaster and it's on you. I'm not sure that's very good politics, really, to attack your, your membership, your, the, the broad base of your support. Mm. Uh, and again, I think it shows that the Tory party is just really in this self-destructive, we've had enough mode, mm. uh, we don't like the people who vote for us. That's a problem. Mm. Mm. He was also attacking fellow members of, of, of the Cabinet, you know, people yes, who had support in this people. trust to then, to then get a, a job in the Cabinet. Yes, I think, I think he was saying there's sort of lack of integrity. But, you know, as, as other people have pointed out, as Nadine Doris has pointed out, they did this to Boris Johnson. They, they are in the mood for destroying their leader. And it's not necessarily because it's Liz Truss, even though Liz Truss has certainly not helped herself. Um, if, as you predict, Liz Truss does go at the end of this week, what next? I mean, who's going to be wheeled in? There's going to be a coronation, presumably. Well, the, the, the mood at the moment seems to be to swing back towards the sort of Cameroon era. Are we seeing a sort of Cameroonian restoration of these fairly centrist figures who at least sort of project competence, seem to calm the market, seem to restore some sort of stability? So Rishi Sunak, Michael Gove? Uh, Rishi Sunak would be, would be probably the favourite, I think, although, you know, the, the Boris gang hate him uh, and they will stop at nothing to stop him. Mm. Yeah. Oh, uh, are we talking about today? End of today? Uh, I, well, people are saying end of the week. I think she'll last the week, to be clear. But uh, a lot of Tories say she won't.
Yeah, uh, and in fact, Margaret uh, says, after the complete chaos that the backstabbers have caused since getting Boris out, I think we need to bring Boris back, otherwise we will end up with the uh, Labour Party getting back in. Mm. Thank you, Margaret. Balls for the return of the blonde bombshell. Let us know your thoughts this morning, Freddie. Thank you very much indeed.